Hello everybody. In this lecture what I'll try to basically aim at is understanding the whole concept of shear stresses in bending. Now we know that when a beam is loaded by some kind of a transverse load system, then essentially at every cross section of the beam, there are internal forces cropping up. The internal forces are namely bending moment, shear force and axial force. Now the strains that are induced due to these axial stresses are comparatively small as compared to bending strains or shear strains. So for now, we'll ignore this actual strength. In the previous lecture, we have studied about bending stresses and we have seen that this bending stresses that is basically the compressive and the tensile stresses gives result to a couple and this couple is essentially the bending moment that balances the resultant moment at every cross section of the beam. In this lecture, we will try to understand how shear stresses gives rise to shear forces. There will be shear stresses acting at every cross section of the beam and the resultant of this shear stresses at every cross section is what gives us the shear force. And we will try to see whether we can find a distribution of the shear force or, or the shear stresses all over the cross section. Now let us proceed. For example, I have this beam with me and it is loaded transversely suppose by loads 1, 2, 3 and suppose the reaction is 4 and 5. Now I draw some kind of a plane and that plane suppose is Mn. Now in the previous lecture we have, cons the, we have taken the bending stress, we have made the derivation of bending stress rather from the whole concept of pure bending. Now what was this pure bending all about? In pure bending it was considered that every at every region at the region where in the shear force is equal to zero the bending moment is constant. But in normal cases we have bending moment changing at every cross section and essentially shear force will be constant or it will also change. So essentially we have shear force at every cross section of the beam in normal bending scenario. And we will take normal bending in this case. Right. Now let us cut this beam by a section Mn. And let us represent this cross section here. Suppose this is my cross section and this is my neutral axis. And the resultant shear force at this cross section is nothing but is equal to Vx. And this Vx is the result of the shear stresses acting all over the cross section. Now let us take some infinitesimally small planes which are parallel to this axis, suppose xx. This plane, suppose, is of area dA. And all over this plane, I have the uniform shear force, shear stress acting. So tau will be constant in this plane. Right. And suppose this is the breadth of the beam and is called B. Right. Now due to this shear stress, there will be another type of shear stress that will develop which will be called as the horizontal shear stresses. Because we know from this concept that if there is an element like this and if there is a shear stress acting here, then to make this element in, to, take, to make this element in equilibrium, we have some kind of opposing shear force in, at this edge, and this too will create some kind of a clockwise couple. So to balance that, we have shear stresses across this edge also. So this tau and this tau are of equal magnitude and are called the complementary shear stresses. So essentially, I have in this plane certain shear stresses and those are also defined by tau. Right. So essentially there are two types of shear stresses. Number one, transverse shear stresses and number two, horizontal shear stresses. This transverse shear stresses gives the resultant shear force at every cross section of the beam and we will deal about it in greater detail now. Now we got to see another thing also. At the stop phase, 
there will not be any horizontal shear stress. Right. And as such, there will not be any transverse shear stress in, at this edge. But there will be a shear force acting at this cross section that is Vx. So there must be certain shear stresses at this cross section. So essentially, this edge will have zero shear stress, but this region will have certain value of shear stress. So the shear stress will vary all over the cross section and this variation, this distribution is what we will derive in the, in, in the next phase of this lecture.